Today, let's look at how the Orthodox have banned scripture. This is to do with the declaration that Jesus, the Son of God, is a creature in Colossians 1. So the Orthodox ban came in the Council of Antioch in 341. It says, holding then this faith, holding it in the presence of God and Christ from beginning to end, we anathematize every heretical heterodoxy, and if any teaches beside the sound and right faith of the scriptures that time or season or age either is or has been before the generation of the Son, be he anathema. Or if anyone says that the Son is a creature as one of the creatures, or an offspring as one of the offsprings, or a work as one of the works, and not the aforesaid articles one after another, as the divine scriptures have delivered, or if he teaches or preaches beside what we received, be he anathema. For all that has been delivered in the divine scriptures, whether by prophets or apostles, do we truly and reverentially both believe and follow. Just to add, the word anathema basically means you are cursed. And at that time, this is the fourth century, the state got behind the churches who held to creeds like this, and they either banned you from church altogether, or if you were totally a heretic, according to them, they banished you. So let's see what the apostles delivered according to this creed. Some years ago, I observed that many translations used the word creature in reference to Jesus in Colossians 1.15. This is part of the famous hymn of Christ, along with Philippians 2, that many teach and understand as somehow Christ existing before he was born. But we'll see why this translation is opted for the word creature here. Now, it has to do, obviously, with the virgin birth. According to Matthew, the genesis of Messiah Jesus was like this. And you will find the word genesis, which is a word that has been corrupted in some copies of the New Testament, but has been uh, retained in some translations like the NIV or today's NIV. And then the account in verse 20 goes on to talk about the child begotten in Mary, resulting from the creating power of God's Spirit. And you'll find, again, the word begotten, not conceived, but a begetting, a procreation taking place. And the proper translation of the Greek is noted by many other translations, like the ones you see there. The other reason the Son is a creature to Paul in Colossians, the other account of the virgin birth, Luke goes on to tell us that the Holy Spirit came upon the Virgin Mary, the power of the Most High. For that reason, the Holy One begotten will be called the Son of God. And this is in answer to Mary's questions about how she was going to get pregnant without having had relations with a man. Now, there are evangelical concessions to this clear New Testament teaching that Jesus is a creature, part of the creation, that is, as the Son of God. The famous Adam Clark in his commentary notes, to say that the Son was begotten from all eternity is, in my opinion, absurd. And the phrase, eternal Son, is a positive self-contradiction. The conjunction of these two terms Son and eternity is absolutely impossible as they imply essentially different and opposite ideas. Here, Adam Clark is reflecting a position held by many noted evangelicals of today, like MacArthur, who reject the notion of the so called eternal generation of the Son. We have another quote here from Van Buren that Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary, had existed with God before the creation of the world, would be worse than unintelligible. 
It would destroy all coherence in the essential Christian claim that Jesus was truly a human being. Jesus of Nazareth began his life, began to exist at a definite time in history. The word became flesh. Lastly, we have Dr. James Dunn, who has been the premier, I would say, Christological writer, expert of, I don't know, the last 40 years at least. Luke 1 is sufficiently clear that it's a begetting, a becoming, which is in view. The coming into existence of one who will be called and will in fact be the Son of God. Not by the transition of a pre-existent being to become the soul of a human baby or the metamorphosis of a divine being into a human fetus. Similarly in Acts, there's no sign of any Christology of pre-existence.